Um, but uh, my name is Isabel White, and I'm curator of public programs here. Um, welcome to this space. I think, uh, if I'm not wrong, this is the, uh, the first time we've actually had one of our public discussions in the gallery space rather than in our lecture theatre screening space downstairs. Um, and there are particular reasons for that. It was very much conceived as part of the exhibition that there will be an opportunity to activate this particular installation. Um, as you, you may be aware, the installation is a section through the London Palestinian Parliament work on which began in 96 when it seemed that um, there was a possibility that conflict between Israel and Palestine would be resolved. Um, the building was subsequently abandoned um, in 2003 when that was no longer seen to be a possibility. Um, what is contained by the abandoned Parliament, however, um, are two uh, national territories and a strip which um, does not belong to either side, but is the borderline that runs between um, Israel and Palestinian territories. Um, and what that suggests um, is an opportunity to discuss um, possibilities of uh, New government, uh, new political formations, new assemblies that are suggested not only by um, this particular geographical area but more widely um, provoked by recent political um, and economic events. And it's the purpose of this event to, to move from the geographically specific towards how the work of decolonizing architecture. Um, Relevant uh, in, in various different contexts, including those that are very immediate to us. Oh, all that I can say is my thank you to the audience. Thank you very much, um, everyone involved in the exhibition, for uh, creating this incredible lineup of speakers in this very exciting event. Um, and I also want to thank my, my, my past and uh, present colleagues, uh, Siobhan Carroll, um, who worked on this program before I arrived, and also Louise. And James Brower um, and Sam Merceler um, for all the logistics and techniques. Um, and now I'm going to hand it over to um, three members of Decolonizing Architecture to uh, give a, a round of introductions today. Uh, Sandy Hillel, Alessandro Petty, and Ayala Weston. Thank you very much. Common, 
because most of the time the notion of the public has been used by the Israeli government to expropriate what was before the common. And I'll give you some examples. For example, the, the first project uh, that is the space here that was um, the idea of reusing the settlements of Sagot after its evacuation. In a way, it's uh, also um, a way in which for us trying to reclaim what was the common before, this settlement was declared as a uh, public land. This was a system in which um, the Israeli state, every time uh, there is a kind of uh, form of uh, communal land, then declared that this is a state land that in this specific context with means only for uh, Israelis and never for Palestinians. So this in the last decades reduced Palestinians in only very strictly private sphere. This is not only physically private sphere, so which is basically your house and your private private lot, but also conceptually. So any idea of communality was somehow linked to the idea of the state, which of course not representing you somehow. And this is what's you know clear in, uh, in many ways. So all different forms of uh, communal land, it was the middle land, uh, the WAP, there were more than 10, 12 different definitions which Palestinians were having common uses in Palestine on this land. All these categories of common of commonality was flattened under the, the category of public. You know? in, this, in this case, would only mean uh, public meaning uh, in relation to, to the state. Um, so, uh, the first project we also understand actually today after four years and especially looking, let's say, the previous project from this the last one, which is the parliament building, we understood that at that time also our interest was actually how to reactivate the users, the common users of, of this land. And then this is where it shed light on the idea that the settlements itself, instead of being looked only as a kind of uh, clear manifestation of, of relation of power and, uh, and colonization, would be also potentially look at the places in which you can actually uh, reinvent uh, an idea of what is the common today in Palestine. You know, that suddenly, that the Palestinians have been uh, reducing, um, you know, uh, enclave and, and where defined spaces where any idea of public space has been uh, somehow expropriated. So, for us, was a kind of understanding of how, even looking to the most extreme uh, place of expropriation, which are the settlements, actually, we can reimagine a form of uh, commonality somehow. And um, so, this was for us, I think, uh, let's say, first project that, um, uh, looking from the today perspective, was also an investigation on on how these different plots that also you see there represented in, in the models would be uh, reactivated for, uh, for new uses. Um, and then every project somehow it's, um, it's a sort of also continuation of, of, of uh, some, sometimes the same kind of ideas but from, from different perspectives. So the second one was the Red Castle and the Lewis Line was also a sort of exploration on understanding how in the very space of colonial separation actually we can look into the spaces and understanding how the absence of law or a certain ambiguity of law would also open up uh, let's say possible political dimension. And this was let's say um, uh, one of the, the projects that also leads to uh, this last project was about the parliament building uh, where the line acquired this more clear political dimension, right? Because also when we start to be interested in, in, uh, in, in this kind of um, uh, building, uh, it was the fact that it was representing a kind of political failure, right? Because this was conceived as, as a parliament building and never actually worked as a parliament. But in its failure also it contains a possible, uh, um, let's say, space for uh, understanding politics of today and what we were also interested in is understanding if we can open up a new platform of uh, political engagement. So what we discovered when we start to investigate the dimension of this parliament, that the parliament was sitting actually on the line that uh, somehow the um, Jerusalem municipality um, line uh, unilaterally declared by, the, by Israel was somehow cutting the buildings in two parts. So one it was let's say, inside, uh, inside Jerusalem, the other one was in the West Bank, and then it was this space, that, which is the space of the line, which is
which is in this case was the space that for us was um, the space somehow without um, um, you know a legal clear definition. You know? And this where what we also represented here in this um, in this occasion. And this is where we start to understand what kind of political representation you know, in this line could be activated or reactivated. You know? So somehow for us the installation is also as in this case, uh, the possibility to actually create a physical experience of gathering together around the space and imagining a different form of political participation beyond what is already uh, kind of known, which is the, let's say, parliament with a certain kind of political representation. In that case, we were much more interested in how, around this line, new figure like the figure of the refugees and, and extraterritorial extra figures could be actually uh, uh, not only represented, but actually being inside the space and operating inside the spaces. Um, so, and this is in, in, the, in this kind of specific, maybe uh, you know, end exactly from uh, from Palestine that today we would uh, also like like to start. And I would just like maybe to um, very briefly to uh, introduce some of the speakers and and what is more or less the idea of. Uh, um, around some of the themes that we'd like to discuss today. Um, in the first session, we would like to, um, to the help of um, some collaborators, some artists and architects that work with us in, in several projects, maybe to trace back um, this theme of the common in, in, in different projects. So we will start um, uh, with um, Right, but then we, we change it in the order, so um, maybe with Livin the guy that we, uh, we was more happy on the idea that actually his intervention that was planned on the third session would be actually at the beginning, because he was trying to engage with you know, the very definition of what is the public and what is the common. Uh, since we have now also been working with him into uh, the live studio in, uh, in Rotterdam, um, he would somehow uh, maybe uh, imagine this intervention as a kind of clarification of what we actually uh, intend by uh, the public, the private, and, uh, and the common. Um, and in that sense, also, he will both, uh, use uh, a concept of heterotopia that he has uh, been working on this concept uh, since years now, and, and trying exactly to, to look also to this concept from, uh, from the idea of, uh, of heterotopia. So, we have first Dylan the Cowder, um, uh, somehow introducing and hoping that this will help uh, somehow to clarify some of the concept that we'd like to, to discuss today. And then we, we ask um, Lorenzo Pezzani to, um, um, to, in a way, um, present the project that uh, he was involved in uh, two years ago, in the summer, um, on a project called the Red Castle and Blue S Line, where for the first time, in a way, we realize the potentiality that um, uh, associated to understanding the very nature of this colonial separation for us. So, in a way, it was uh, at that moment that we uh, somehow discover the paradox of, of this impossibility of separating spaces. You know, and exactly in this attempt to separate, that we actually would like to activate uh, uh, new spaces of uh, for for the common. Um, and then uh, Michelle Abouan, she would um, then introduce our, um, let's say, more recent project, which is um, it's about um, the parliament building, and she participated together with Nicola Perugini on, on part of the research on, uh, on, on, on the parliament building. Um, and then we move to a third project, which is, uh, will be, this is the most recent one, and it's, it's still Ongoing, which is with the Berlaga Studio, where the idea of the common in this case it was more in relation to uh, the refugees. And now you can understand that some of the projects are, all of the projects are very much interconnected one to another. So in this case, it was when we started to understand how this extraterritorial dimension would be uh, politically relevant, we understood how much this is relevant for thinking uh, the return of Palestinian refugees. Palestine and what might be their political kind of uh, uh, participation and representation. And this would be, let's say, the first, uh, the first session. And we have then half an hour discussion every, at the end of every session because
for us will not be just maybe presenting what we have done, but most importantly for us will be actually engaging in a discussion and looking at um, critically the work that we produce and, and trying not to make some sense of what we have done so far. The second part is then, let's say, moving from specific problems associated to a specific territory, which is Palestine, to the larger kind of geographical dimension, which is the Arab Spring. So, uh, and of course, understanding Palestine without understanding how the Arab world is, is transforming is, uh, is missing, of course, uh, an important part of the story. And uh, in order to do that, we ask Sari Hanafi to, um, uh, to somehow bring some of this discussion into the general uh, kind of political and social dimension of, of the Arab Spring. And also Russia Salta, who just arrived from Tahrir Square, will also um, will be using uh, some of, uh, let's say, more, uh, let's say, work that she produced, especially looking also at the Palestinian poster art and, and, and how this, in a way, was a form of representing the Palestinian struggle, but as I said, very much also in relation of what is happening now in, uh, uh, in the Arab world. This is so, it's going to be the second part, it's going to be the second session. So we move from Palestine to the Arab Spring, and then the last session was an idea of actually trying to connect geographically then of what is then um, the occupying movements. Well, it's still, for, you know, from us, from Palestine, it's still um, the world of occupation has a lot of problems, you know, but what was interesting for us also was looking to this occupation movement, was also somehow decolonizing even the, the very idea of using this word, you know, and even the word of occupation, finally, that maybe is being used different of how we always perceive this word in, uh, uh, in Palestine. Um, so, I would, in this sense, since I think even obviously at the beginning of this panel, I would rather not take too much time so that you know, it will not be so long uh, discussion so that you know, we would um, present and maybe um, trying to help us to clarify some of the basic um, uh, concepts in relation to the idea of the past and the practice. So, thank you once again for being here and I hope that uh, you will enjoy. Starting from Hannah Arendt, but uh, sort of trying to systematize 
and I'll be very quick if possible. Systematize um, uh, the concept of Foucault. So we have uh, the three spheres. We call it the three the theory of the three spheres. You have the public sphere. You have the private sphere. The Hannah Arendt said this is, of course, the uh, sphere of action. Here uh, you have uh, the sphere of uh, height, the sphere of appearance in Hannah Arendt's terms. The private sphere is the sphere.